A total lunar eclipse turns the moon blood red, Saturn dominates the night sky, and a comet makes its way through our solar system. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see in the night sky for September of 2025. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Let's begin our journey through the night sky this month with a total lunar eclipse. During this event, the Earth moves in between the Sun and the Moon, casting our shadow down on the lunar surface. The first of these shadows is known as the penumbra, but the most dramatic is called the umbra. It's during this time that an obvious shadow will slowly be cast on the Moon until it is completely covered by the Earth, creating an orangish-red blood moon. While most of this eclipse will be visible from many parts of the world, the best views of the umbra in totality will be from parts of Australia, Asia, Europe, and Africa on the night of September 7th into the early morning of September 8th. Around 1630 UTC, the Earth's umbra or shadow will begin to slowly move across the surface of the Moon. At 1730 UTC, the full eclipse will be underway and the moon will turn that famous blood red color and stay that way until around 1850 UTC when it begins to move out of the Earth's shadow. If you find yourself under the path of this eclipse and in particular totality, please double check the date and times for where you live around the world with your local news. And also be sure to share your experience and questions with us if you're able to see this event in the comment section below. Arguably the most beautiful planet in our solar system, Saturn will be visible from sunset to sunrise throughout the entire month of September as we approach opposition with it. During times of opposition, the Earth and Saturn move into a position in their orbits where our planet is in between Saturn and the Sun, having Saturn rise right when the Sun sets and set right when the Sun rises. This month also provides some of the last opportunities to go out and see the shadow of Titan move across the surface of Saturn. This event only occurs during a small window of time every 15 years, as Saturn and its rings tilt edge on towards Earth in an event known as a ring plane crossing. This September, you'll be able to spot the small dark shadow of Titan on September 4th between 1.30 a.m. and 5 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. As the tilt of Saturn's rings changes from our perspective, the next transit will be higher up on the planet on September 20th from 1 a.m. to 3.30 a.m. This event will be best viewed with at least a 6-inch telescope under steady sky conditions around 200 times magnification. I was fortunate to have clear skies early in the morning on August 3rd and was able to take out my telescope to see the shadow of Titan move across the surface of Saturn. I decided to try to take some video and pictures of it by connecting my DSLR to my telescope to give me this final image of a pinpoint shadow just starting to make its way across the surface of this beautiful planet. With its discovery this past May, this is the first time we've talked about Comet C2025 K1 Atlas, and it's currently a telescope target at roughly magnitude 12. For the next few months, we'll be checking in on this comet as it continues to brighten during its closest approach to the Sun in early October. Even though this comet can be viewed from both hemispheres, this September the Southern Hemisphere will have the better vantage point of K1 Atlas during its initial approach to the Sun, with a close pass by Mars on September 20th and the Moon on September 24th. And just a quick update on our interstellar friend 3i Atlas, the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescopes have been taking images of that comet as it continues to travel through our solar system. It'll be beyond the reach of telescopes, but is an excellent challenge target for those of you that want to really stretch the limits of your astrophotography. Before we continue with our journey through the night sky, I'd like to take a moment to recognize this month's sponsor, Aranus. If there's one thing that can get in the way of this hobby, it's bad weather. And basic weather apps just don't cut it when it comes to astronomy-specific weather forecasting. To maximize your time at the telescope, Arnus puts together a detailed nightly forecast, taking into account the start of astronomical night, cloud cover, and scene conditions to give you the best windows of time to go outside to view or image the night sky. See how clear the night sky might be throughout the week, which planets are out to view, and get a curated list of big events and discoveries in astronomy. 
Arnis is available as a free and premium version through the Apple App Store and Google Play. And I would encourage you to try it out to help you figure out when it's best to go out to observe and image the night sky. Along with these major events, let's take a look at other objects in our solar system in deep space, beginning with the moon. And we're going to have a full moon on September 7th. Last quarter moon, September 14th. New moon, September 21st. And a first quarter moon, September 29th. The moon also makes several close passes to objects in the night sky this month, beginning with Saturn and Neptune on September 8th, M45 on September 12th, Jupiter September 16th, Venus on the 19th, and Mars on the 24th. Let's turn our attention now to the planets of the solar system. In the early evening, you're going to just be able to see Mars right above the horizon for the first part of September but by the middle of the month, it will begin to get washed out by the setting sun. Along with the aforementioned Saturn, Earth is also at opposition with Neptune this month on September 23rd, and both Saturn and Neptune will be at a nice height above the horizon for observing and imaging after 10.30 p.m. Switching to the early morning sky, you'll still find Saturn and Neptune in the west along with Uranus pretty much straight up near the Pleiades star cluster. The king of the planets Jupiter will be at a nice height for observing and imaging in the east before sunrise, and Venus will be making its way closer to the rising sun as the month goes on. Let's leave our solar system behind and move on to our deep sky challenge of the month. To find these objects, go outside about an hour and a half after sunset with a pair of binoculars and face towards the south. This is my favorite time of year to go out and observe the core of our galaxy, the Milky Way with its wealth of deep sky objects. Begin by finding the constellation Sagittarius with the naked eye, and see if you can make out any faint fuzzy objects around this area. Now let's move up to a pair of binoculars and start by simply scanning this part of the sky, which might reveal some open clusters, globular clusters, and nebulosity. If you own a telescope, put your lowest power eyepiece in it, and for me that's a 30 millimeter one that gives me about 50 times magnification in my 12 inch Dobsonian telescope. If your field of view is wide enough, you might be able to spot a duo of two globular clusters at the same time, NGC 6553 and NGC 6544. From there, move up to one of the best star forming regions in the night sky, the Lagoon Nebula. At a distance of roughly 4,000 light years, this can even be a naked eye target under excellent seeing conditions, but will truly come alive with a telescope at low power. Just up from the lagoon is the gorgeous open cluster M21 and the famous Trefid Nebula. This object is about the size of a full moon in the night sky and is made up of an open cluster of stars, an emission nebula, a reflection nebula, and a dark nebula that divides the emission nebula into three distinct parts. Once you get a taste of the Milky Way, you'll keep coming back to this part of the sky night after night. Thanks for joining us on our journey through the night sky. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what questions you have and what you're getting out to observe and image in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.